Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Waite. We're, I'm here with Jeff Thompson. He's going to present the Find Sec Bugs and how we can use it to identify and help us prevent security issues in Jenkins Core and in Jenkins plugin development. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. It will be posted to the YouTube Jenkins channel in the online meetups playlist. Jeff, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So yes, I'm Jeff Thompson. I've been using Jenkins for many years. Currently work for CloudBees, as you can see here. I've been um, contributing to, as, as part of this, to Jenkins Core, Jenkins Security for a few years now. And I'm also the remoting maintainer. Um, make sure the remoting and the agent stuff all works. So that's some of my background. What I'm gonna be talking about here today is another project I'm working on in Jenkins community in general to try and improve our quality and our security stuff. So about so adding. Jeff, sorry, you wanna to jump to the next slide? One of the challenges will be how people ask questions. Uh, yes. Could you show that? Let's so do while, that. While Je Jeff will be right on to his intro in just a minute, but we're going to use the Platform Special Interest Group Gitter channel. Okay, Jeff, go ahead with your intro now. We use this <laughs> channel for question and answer during this session. If you'd like to type them, you're also welcome to unmute yourself and ask questions verbally. We don't mind if you, if you interrupt. This is, we expect it to be a rather smaller group and we want to be, it to be conversational. Go ahead, Jeff, sorry for the interruption. Yep, that's fine. So I've been working on this project to add the find sec bugs tool into our existing spot bugs tool and to spread this throughout the community to catch problems or potential problems earlier and help improve code quality. So we chose this platform SIG just because it seemed like a good place to dump this conversation. So a little bit of background here. Um, spot bugs, many people are probably familiar with it, but if you're relatively new to Jenkins or Java or other things you might not be, it's a static code analysis tool for Java that you can hook into the build process. It runs, uh, it analyzes class files and has um, pattern matching rules to try and detect certain classes of problems that are fairly common and may cause issues in, in your Java code. Now, in a way, it's been around for a long time because it originally started as fine bugs, which is almost as old as Jenkins. And fine bugs then kind of collapsed a few years ago and it relaunched as spot bugs. And I mention that because you see references to both in the Jenkins palms and all sorts of stuff. Uh, current usage references spot bugs, but find bug settings in Jenkins apply the same way. It was, it was hooked in to move forward cleanly. Um, so it's standard, spot bugs is standard in many or all Jenkins um, parent palms. It's like plugin, core, the libraries, many other places. It's been used there for a long time and builds fail. Now, if you've ever submitted something, or contributed something, builds fail because of a spot bugs error, you go clean it up and get it. And that gives us a, a little better, um, gives us some better quality and some cleaner code moving forward and may help us eliminate some actual errors. One of the things to know on this as a developer is that it's configurable. And the easiest way to look at this is if you're working in a project, if you look at the effective palm and look in the properties or look in things related to either find bugs and spot bugs, you can see some configurable elements of this. There's how, how hard it tries, how the threshold for whether or not it reports, it's a reporting threshold. So it says, you know, I'm only gonna tell you about things that I'm fairly confident in, or I'm gonna tell you about everything, whether or not I'm confident in it. There are some other configurations on that that you can see. So find security bugs or find sec bugs is a plugin for spot bugs. So it's actually integrated into spot bugs. And what it does is I adds another 135 rules or vulnerability types. 
And these are all targeted around security issues, unlike the spot bugs rule set, which is just more general. Some of those could be security, but this is a set of ones that are specifically about things that come up as security concerns. One of the things to be aware of it with it is that it's it's by design the rules are are written to be about Java web applications. So a lot of its rules are things that might be okay if you were running a local console application of some sort, but in a security application may be a problem. So um, just as an example here quickly, it fits quite well with Java, be, or sorry, with Jenkins, because it's a security application or a web application in need of security. Um, it does a few things differently. So there's some oddities and some places where we need to kind of tune find sec bugs maybe. But like with the remoting side and the agent, there's some things where it's like, yeah, that doesn't matter because it's agent and the administrator is launching it and these sort of things. So you do see that that focus on Java web applications in it, which is a reasonably good fit. It's also focused on a lot of the things in the security community. OWASP is one of the big um, repositories of information about it. They publish a top 10 list of what's the biggest vulnerabilities. And so find sec bugs tries to fit into that. Fi um, includes references to OWASP in their descriptions and to the CWE, the common weakness enumeration in, um, in the descriptions and the explanations. So there's really um, a lot of a lot of stuff to help you figure out what the um, issues are, although some of them are still quite complicated to understand. And there's the URL for uh, Find Sec Bugs Project. Uh, it's also on, on you know, it's, it's on GitHub, you can see what it all is, but basically there's the, the page for it. Ah, uh, let's go. So this is the proposal that I've been working on now for several months here. Well, yeah, quite a while. It's, it's back into like November, I think, that I first started trying to get this going. So what I want to get to here coming up, not, not immediately, and it's kind of piece by piece, is to add the find sec bugs configuration into the parent palms in Jenkins. And I've had some stages coming along for that, which I'll show you later in preparation for this. But I want to put the, the configuration into the parent palm for plugins, into the parent palm for Jenkins, into the stapler module parent palm, any other places that we find it like that. Um, this means that when this is goes into there, that all projects that update to that meth to that new version of the palm, all of them will then automatically run find sec bugs in addition to um, to spot bugs. And boy, before I forget about it, let me mention that there's an oddity, I think it's wrong, in the um, Jenkins plugin parent palm, that if you do skip tests, it also skips spot bugs. And this one has caught me multiple times. And so you, you have to, you know, really kind of fiddle around with that or else just run the whole thing in order to see the, the spot bugs and, you know, also the find sec bugs actually run. So just be aware of that. I've sometimes, I've seen people sometimes do, well, this didn't, this worked fine on my machine and then I pushed it into the Jenkins CI and now it's failing. Well, that's the spot bugs that you're probably skipping tests one of the last times you ran it to save yourself a little time. So just be aware of that one. I will point out here also that on item number two, the Jenkins parent palm, there is already a pull request for that one. And that one actually preceded my work. It's, um, it was put up there by somebody else in the community who started fixing a few things in Jenkins based upon the results that he found there. And trying to get that one moving forward, actually that probably, maybe that ought to be in the number one spot because I'd want to get that one moving forward soon. 
let's see here. So the, when I first posted about this uh, and wanting to move forward on this idea in the Jenkins developer email list, we got some, some good, good healthy discussion and some concerns were raised. And I've distilled some of those concerns along with some other concerns other people have had and other things onto this page. I'm calling them analysis conundrums. They're kind of paradoxes or conflicts. They're, they're things where there's a reason to do X and there's also a reason to do Y. And so um, I'm gonna go through and talk about some of them and, and why, what we need to do with them. So one that comes up a lot is what is the best time to add new analysis capabilities like find sec bugs? And the answer is always, the, a long time ago is the best time to do it. From project start is always the best time. But at any point where it's now, the longer ago that it was, was always better. And doing it now, is always more difficult because then you have legacy code. You're gonna have findings that you can't change or that are difficult to change um, and, may, and may not be an issue, but you could have fixed them very easily long ago and now introducing it at this point, um, it's more things that you have to suppress and deal with. That's, that's, not, a, that's not an issue with fine sec bugs specifically, that's, that's an issue with these sort of tools, these sort of analysis, these sort of detections. So the other alternative, when you get to this point, which is kind of the conundrum of it, is you say, oh, it's too difficult to add now, we won't do it, so we'll just delay. But of course, a year from now, the best time to have added them, well, a much better time to have added them would have been right now than a year from now. So it's, it's, you always kind of pay this price unless you did it right from the beginning, but the more that you wait, the worse it is. So proceeding forth and doing it is still better than saying, well, yeah, it's too much work, we can't do it now. Um, the next one that I wanna talk about that always comes up with these sort of things is issue detection. And this largely comes into, into two categories that I've listed here. Tools like this don't find everything. And as a matter of fact, in Jenkins, we have some specific types of problems that crop up a lot that this tool doesn't find. And so it's like, okay, yeah, it's not worth it because it doesn't find everything. And the other side of that is that it finds things which are, are false findings. They're not really an issue. And so you spend time trying to do something with that. So it doesn't find everything, but it finds too much incorrect. I mean, you're playing both sides of those. But on the other hand, it does find some things. And so there's value in the things that it finds. And there's value in it um, forcing us or helping us to look at the types of things that it's reporting about, to try and make improvements as we're moving forward, and as I'm pointing out in this next one, it's always difficult with legacy outdated code to introduce these sort of things. And you always get to this kind of, well, it's not finding anything on my legacy outdated code that I can do about, so what's, what's the value of it? But in reality, most of the value from these sort of things isn't necessarily in finding um, things that's already there, like with spot bugs. When I've added spot bugs, or find bugs predecessor before to projects. I've done it several times. It rarely finds things that are value. I mean, the percentage of actual interesting hits is, is low. But what it does is it starts pointing out areas where you can improve the code. So you don't introduce regressions. And then as you're introducing a new thing and it says, okay, MD5 is a really outdated algorithm, don't use it. You go, I don't have to use MD5 right now. I can use something better. And you don't add even more of that, that you know, technical debt into it. So uh, that's kind of that issue of existing code. There's another one which is separate from that, which comes up particularly in um, security domain, which is about this openness so if we run find sec bugs, it's possible that by 
uh, running that on Jenkins, we will find real issues. And by doing that, um, people will become more aware, you know, attacker could learn something about how to attack Jenkins from running fine sec bugs. And so that's a concern with, especially the security side of it. But there's also this other side of it in that being open source, there is nothing that stops an attacker from running fine sec bugs on any part of Jenkins right now. And so it's a, it's a security through obscurity argument, which always doesn't work, especially when you're publishing your source code on GitHub for everybody to work out with. So, and so, so Jeff, go ahead. Uh, on, on that one, even since fine sec bugs is doing bytecode level analysis, right? It's not even so much that we're open source as the fact that our bytecode's available because I assume fine sec bugs could analyze bytecode from any that's fed to any Java virtual machine. Therefore, we, we have not increased the threat profile simply by, by admitting that fine sec bugs could be run on our bytecode. Of course it can't. I, I would imagine that would be true. I've never tried it except as in, within a, a POM file as part of a build step. And since all of our source code and all of our POM files and everything are there, it's not hard to stick in the half dozen or something lines, run you know Jenkins build and see, oh yeah, this is an interesting area. So yeah, it's, it's not really a terribly meaningful um, argument. It again, is the argument that we need to learn as developers more about this and make it more part of our stuff and then um, work through it and add, add the improvements everywhere that we can and if we find any real security issues to address those. So um, yeah, those are some of the comments that have come up in pull requests and discussions and such and, and other times that I've, I've done this. So now we're on to the part of it, okay, of where I'm a developer, what do I need to do about this? I'm a Jenkins developer, I'm a core developer, I'm a plug, Jenkins plugin developer. And this even applies, you know, if you develop in other spheres, but this is focused towards Jenkins. So, like I said, my plan is to update to update the POM version of each of these areas at some point to add the FindSec uh, bugs as a plugin. And when you do that, then when you next update to that POM in your plugin in the Jenkins library, whatever, it will then include FindSec bugs analysis when it does the spot bugs analysis. So that's all you really have to do to get this, once I can get those, those POM, plug in, POM changes in, is um, update. So do you have a question I, coming up, Mark? If I wanted to do it before then? You can. I would recommend backing it back out after, it go, after you upgrade to a parent POM that does that. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you want to go ahead and do it now, I don't have any, any reason kind of not to. Um, because of the way POM inheritance works, you can, it's a little hard sometimes to add something like this in write in a child POM. And sometimes you get like two instances of spot bugs that runs, one with this and one without. It's a lot easier to just add it where the thing is defined in the top parent POM and to get that to line up correctly. Now, is it a problem if you don't get that to line up correctly? Not really. I mean, it might add a few seconds to your run unless you've got a, you're running Jenkins core or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's, you can go either way, but the, the plan is to make it available, push it to everybody. One item that we've seen that you, you should know about, you may see, this this message, the following class is needed for analysis we're missing. You can see an instance example of it from the platform labeler plugin in the, the other text below as to what it looks like. Test, apply, and accept. Missing class is three. Just ignore this. There's a spot bugs issue on it where there, it doesn't mean that things are not 
running, that find sec bugs isn't running, that spot bugs really has a problem. It's the spot bugs um, engine, a plugin, something that is logging stuff at a higher level than it should be. And so it's, it's providing information that you can't make any use of here where it's kind of something where maybe the spot bugs developers could improve things at some point on their area. At most, it means that it may not be able to test some things as well as it could, but I mean, it's doing what it can. So this is what you really need to do is to include it in the Palm, get it via the um, upcoming future version or um, get it by adding it in yourself. I know Mark merged it into the platform label or plugin directly. And I've done that in the other places where I've already done it. And like when I did that in Jenkins, once I get it up to the Jenkins parent palm, I intend to remove it back out of the Jenkins one itself and just use that one. So this is what you may need to do um, as a developer, maybe, maybe not. I've seen cases where find sec bugs found nothing. Um, sometimes in plugins, so it's like, oh, I know this plugin has a lot to do with security, and it's a fairly big plugin, and it must have some issues, and it runs, and it's like, it doesn't, it's fairly clean. And other ones that are pretty small, and you go, oh yeah, that's one. So you never quite really know how to predict that from what I've seen. Of course, something as big as Jenkins has more, just because it's bigger. Um, so you any findings that it has you need to examine them and figure out what to do with them so here's some of the things that you may need to do with them i'm going to point out that these two in item number one crlf injection logs and information exposure through an error message aren't really ones that Jenkins cares about. You're welcome to try and fix them if you want, but in Jenkins core and remoting, I just um, set those to be ignored, to be excluded. And it's, it's never something that the Jenkins project has made an effort to. So that's a very reasonable thing to do on those ones. I wouldn't do it unless you need to. I see it in some, some plugins where it's like, yeah, we get some of those, but a lot of them, or some of the areas I've seen, we don't. Um, item number two, you can disable all of FindSec bugs by putting in the exclude file this this directive as part of it. You, you can look up the, the full path of it. I just put the one line in there but you can disable find sec bugs in this exclude file by excluding all security bugs. It labeled all of, all of theirs under this category. This means you won't get any use of find sec bugs. My recommendation is to only do this temporarily when you really need to. Find sec bugs provides value. It helps us create better code, better, um, better product for our users. So I really encourage using it. But if you have some thing you've really got to do or you're doing some testing or something, this is one way to, to turn it off. It's going to be opt out because with the way Maven works, it's very, 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 very difficult, if, if at all possible, to make it opt in. And we do want to spread this throughout the community. But if you find that um, you do need to do it. There is this. I would urge you to try and get it working again as soon as possible. More commonly, what you need to do is item number three. So this, it uses the old find bugs warnings annotation. Uh, Spot bug still uses that the same. It hasn't redefined any of that part. You add, this suppress find bugs warnings with the value being the, the error name, um, like the CRLF injection logs, et cetera. And there's an optional parameter for that justification equals. I strongly encourage you to do the justification one also. 
is to leave traces as to why this is not a security issue. And I also encourage you to do narrowly. So if, if it finds something, don't put the suppress warning on the whole class. I found some classes where there isn't, a, there isn't an alternative. You have to put it on the whole class because it's testing things at a class level. But try and put it very narrowly. Put it on only the method that needs it. And what I did in a, a number of cases in Jenkins itself is I did extract method refactoring to pull out a method that just has the piece that has that specific problem and put it on that to try and really localize it and not, not suppress something more than that so that we can keep using this value moving forward. Um, I like that technique of admitting that we want to narrow this thing as much as possible, the use of this as much as possible, and extracting a relatively few lines into a separate dedicated private method just so it can be annotated is perfectly acceptable. That's worked well for me as well. I've, I've had that with spot bugs warnings where it's just cleaner to be able to say, I want this thing excluded, just exactly this segment, I'll extract it to its own private method and off it goes. Yeah. And most of what I'm saying here in this is not different for fine sec bugs than for spot bugs in general. There's a couple of pieces where, you know, it is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a lar it's largely the same thing. Extract that private method and, or put it, you know, if it's a small method, go ahead and use that. And you have to usually add a number of these. It's, the, like I said, it's the downside to put using this in legacy code, a lot of times if we're writing the new code, we can do number four when we hit this sort of a find bugs, a find sec bugs warning, we can improve the code. That's a little harder to do on the legacy code and that's this, this balancing that we have to try and do to move forward. So number four is when possible, don't suppress, just improve the code so that it does something better. And the one example I gave here I mentioned before, MD5 is used a lot of places in Jenkins. It's okay if it's not used for security. So like it's used for fingerprinting in some places. But even there, it's an outdated protocol. It's known problematic and then it's hard, you know, as you get looking through stuff like this, oh, MD5 is used here. Is that really a security case or is that not? You kind of have to reconsider that in the future, deal with those sort of things. So if we can improve these things, we're much better off going forward. Sometimes there's just no option because we do have legacy code. Sometimes there are. And in, um, well, that's number six. I'll get to that in a moment. So, Number five is report security vulnerabilities. If you do, through this, find a security vulnerability, an actual one, um, or something you, you think might reasonably be a security vulnerability, please follow the security reporting processes and report them to um, the Jenkins security team. And then we will work with you to uh, do this through a Jenkins security advisory, let everybody know about it. It's better to do it that way and to be open and upfront about it at the appropriate time when we can get every, give everybody the warning um, than to kind of just quietly fix it or something like that. If you just quietly fix it, people may not know how much they need to upgrade, uh, things along those lines. So follow the process report it, security team will work with you. And sometimes, you know, we find that there's a new class of issue that people have discovered that we need to look in other areas too. And so that's another aspect of reporting that's very helpful. Number six is, is a follow on basically to number four. Sometimes it's like, yeah, we could improve something here, but I, I don't, it's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to get done right now. And so you can create JIRA tickets or tasks in whatever your task tracking mechanism is for improvement. So if you look at the changes that I did in Jenkins when I introduced find sec bugs, some of mine have comments 
relating to a Jenkins dash, you know, number uh, JIRA ticket of something where, yeah, we can improve this. Let's work towards doing this. I put one in for MD5. Let's you know, improve, decrease or eliminate usage of MD5. That's going to be a big effort. There's no way we could do it in that same that same ticket. Okay, let me then go on. Um, I'm going to show some examples of three places. Well, there's, there, there are there are examples. I'm not necessarily going to show all of these, but I will show some in a minute here. Some places where it's already integrated. Some places where I've put in some demo PRs of what it would look like as it's integrated. And then I just wanted to come to this one too. A lot of this and some other comments, and not some, are also in a blog post that I, I wrote here recently. So you can go see some of that more too to see some of these, these details. So I integrated this into remoting. I integrated this into Jenkins. Mark integrated this into platform labeler. And I'm just gonna take a few minutes and show some interesting things about this. Um, so here, this is in Jenkins, and um, you can see where this this is an example of where I did the extract method to get us a smaller method in order to put the annotation there. Now here was a little tiny method, um, and I could just add the suppression there. But in this other place, I extracted the get file from arguments method. And if we look down here, I've got these, and I've got my justification is that this is run from the CLI by the user who's running it. And so this path traversal would be a bad thing if it's a server side action. But as a client side action where the user's running it, they're running it to do these type of operations, and it's fine. So there's, um, I, uh, what was the 21 files that I had to update here to get this to work. Here's another example of doing a narrow one, um, justification, some other things. So this one has been merged. It's been in Jenkins for, I don't know, a month or so now, I think at this point. You're welcome to go take a look at it. You can see how I did it there and what it looks like. Um, which one is this one? This is the remoting one. And so, you know, you can see this one too. Like I said, remoting, since it's not a web application, it's the piece that runs between them and a significant portion of it runs on the client side, on the agent, launched by something that the administrator sets up, um, possibly. Um, a number of these are, not there, there's more issues in here. Remoting also runs at a level where it where it spews out all findings, whereas Jenkins runs at a level where it only spews out the most prominent findings. And so that was part of the the difference why there's more files here in remoting. So yeah, there's there's just some different ones on here. This path traversal in, you know, this is loaded on the on the agent side or from the server, that sort of a thing. Um, let's see. The platform labeler one, I just wanted to point out two things on it as an example. Mark used actually a little bit different one when he did it, but this was my demo. Here's an example of using an exclude file. And um, in order to prove that it was actually working, I introduced this line, which creates a fi fake finding. It's one of those two that I recommended uh, reasonable to exclude. Um, so let's see another one here. Oh, this one is is the credentials plugin, and this one is interesting because it really did find a um, a meaningful catch. Now we'd already fixed it by the time it found it, but if I had run find sec bugs on the credentials plugin a year ago it would have uh, found this issue before anybody else had reported it. So this is at least one example of it really finding an issue, and it was a arbitrary file write issue, I think is what 
what we ended up uh, calling it. It was included in the uh, May 21 advisory of uh, last year. So this shows that it can find some. Now I just suppress them because this deprecated mechanism can't be used from the user. It doesn't take user input. It can only be used on the server for migrating existing data. And so we'll keep that in for a little while longer. Um, here's an example of where the MD5 hash is just used in memory and is never stored. So the easiest solution on this was to change it just to compute hash and have it compute a SHA-256 instead of an MD5. So that was, um, that's an example of actually, you know, improving the code and we can fix the problem pretty readily there. So I'm uh, curious, you didn't worry about the increased compute cost of that or, or that was in this case is just not relevant? I don't think it's important in this case. Um, you know, I haven't gotten this approved yet, so maybe somebody else will be concerned about that. But I don't think so. What it's doing in this particular case is it's computing a hash of the agent jar to see whether or not it needs to update it. Oh, so okay. It's so not... it's very infrequent usage. This isn't in, this isn't hashing every message that's coming over over from the remote side or anything right. like that. Yeah. And so I, I don't know how frequent, maybe once per job, maybe once per connection, probably more likely. So the, the cost is, is probably pretty negligible. And um, this one is an example one from EC2, where there are some things here which would be quite a bit of concern in a server side process, but it doesn't look like they're used. And so just removing them is the cleanest way to do it. In this case, the MD5 is actually stored, so it's harder to um, actually uh, to just change it. I think eventually the project Jenkins project needs to get to that point, but that's not what we're doing at the moment. So those are just some examples. They're available to look at. I pointed out some of the things that I found interesting in them. As we move this forward, we'll have more cases. But these kind of can serve as some examples of how to how to deal with some of this. Um, so the remoting and the, the remoting one's been in ah, recent versions of remoting for a couple of I think since December. I'm not positive on that. The Jenkins one's been in for a month or two. Platform labeler Mark got in the next in the last few weeks. These ones are demo or draft PRs to demonstrate that they're available. And like I said, there's some more or some other um, capture of much of the stuff also in the blog post so people can go back and look at that and, and see some of these comments and some of the things that I thought were interesting in the various examples. So that's what I have. If there's any further questions, um, you know, please ask them. But I think that the fine sec pugs is a very valuable thing to include in Jenkins. Um, there's more and more interest in security with regards to computer software these days. And the Jenkins project, we certainly see that, that increasing. And so we wanna get that out closer and closer to the developers, the more that we can, so that we can get the things corrected more quickly and not introduced in the first place, which is really the goal of a lot of this, don't introduce security issues to begin with. And, by adding this, it will cost us some amount of time now, but it's better to add it now than to wait longer and longer to not add it. And that's what I'm, I'm working on, trying to get this forward and let everybody know about what's coming up. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks very much. I haven't received any questions from the channel. Thanks for this. The video will be archived and rec rec has been recorded and will be archived on the Jenkins YouTube uh, playlist for online meetups. Thanks very much, Jeff. Yep, thank you. Thanks, All everybody. right.